The I-80 planting tour is brought to you by Pivot Bio Proven, the nitrogen producing microbes that stay put, whether or not. The latest crop progress numbers from USDA also in line with what traders were expecting. The report showing 17% of the corn crop is now planted. That's 3% behind the five-year average. Ohio sits at 8% planted and 8% of the soybeans are now planted nationwide with 3% above the five-year average. Again, it's 8% planted in Ohio. In this week's IED planning tour, we travel to the Buckeye State where farmers are seeing big improvements over last year. Scott Mavis keeps one eye on data. So one of the things we're doing is checking out to make sure that all of our shape files or variable rate files are in the monitor. And one eye on the sky. Oh yeah, we had quite a bit of snow, but it's not a lot of overall moisture, maybe a half inch of actual rains. This fourth generation farmer balances a thriving precision planting business with running a corn and soybean operation in Northwest Ohio. And while the business keeps him busy in the off season, it's now go time for getting a crop in the ground. We've planted about a fourth of our so soybeans so far. Here about a week ago, we were able to get into some of the fields and conditions were great uh, that we were planting into. And we knew the forecast, but uh, we felt comfortable enough planting some soybeans early to hopefully be able to have a little bit higher yield potential by getting them out there early. Mavis says a late season snow barely made a dent in the dry conditions that have plagued his area since last growing season. He says a successful season will depend on taking cues from Mother Nature. One of our biggest challenges here in Northwest Ohio is establishing a good stand, whether it's corn or beans. So we really got to pay attention to the forecast after we plant and hopefully get things out of the ground. Just 10 miles to the south. Usually when you dig up worms, that means it's wet. Mike Zedek's field work is well underway. March was extremely warm for us, uh, warm, dry, and dry weather for us is a big thing because we are very slow to dry out in the springtime with heavy soil types, but that's been a great start so far this year. A family farm, the Zedek's raise corn, beans, and alfalfa with much of the crop going to the local dairy industry. The local dairy farm is a big market for us for, our, for their feed. Uh, with our silage and haylage. Uh, other than that, uh, most of our beans have been going to our non-GMO beans. We're almost 100% non-GMO beans. As old crop soybean prices soared past $15 last week, Zedek knows that it will take careful management to keep his balance sheet in order. Now I fear prices going up too high too fast. Uh, when things go up this fast, all expenses follow that. And then when these prices go back down, Expenses are still way up here, and they're never going to fall back near as fast as the prices can. But for now, he says management of his planting schedule will be key to a successful season. It used to be everybody planted their corn first, and then the beans got taken care of because beans would be fine. But things have changed over the years. Beans are a lot more resilient than corn. You know, they can have a a bad day and still produce very good beans. Ideally, I always said I'd like to start planting by April 25th. If I could plant on April 25th and start on that date every year, I'd be, I'd be happy. Be done by the 15th of May, that would be nice. But boy, the last couple years, Mother Nature's really thrown us the curveball. Challenges that Scott Mavis is all too familiar with. You can't control Mother Nature. It is what it is. I mean, there's years or days that are fr more frustrating than others, but uh, we seem to always get through it. and. Um, Marketing is a challenge. I mean, that's something you can control is the marketing aspect of it, but um, you kind of do or work with it the best you can.